Let Me Tell You a Story is a product of Carolina Storyteller, starring Jonathan Phoenix, written, produced, and directed by Jonathan Phoenix, edited and recorded by Jonathan Phoenix, and horribly marketed by Jonathan Phoenix. Man, I gotta hire a staff. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Carolina Storyteller and sub- subscribe to get exclusive content and all kinds of other neat stuff. We even have merchandise coming. Anyway, sit back and enjoy the show. Happy Saturday, folks. Welcome to Let Me Tell You a Story. I am Jonathan Phoenix. Uh, I'm glad to have you back with me this week. Hope you guys have had a great week. Um, Picture this. It's a normal afternoon in your quiet little town just off the coast in the Gulf and a funeral is being held for what you consider to be the local crazy lady who, uh, well, she supposedly said that when she died, the town was dying with her. But you didn't believe it. That is until they put that casket in the ground and a storm brought a 13-foot storm surge that flattened the city. Well, this is exactly what happened to the people who resided in what is now known as the Monchop Swamp of Louisiana. Let me tell you the story. The story begins at the turn of the 20th century, around 1900, in a small town called Vignet, off the coast of Louisiana, not very far from New Orleans, where a young woman went by the name Auntie Julia, or Julie Brown, if you read the census records. She was considered the voodoo queen of the area, and sought by many for her advice and her rituals. She also practiced hoodoo, which, as many know, is not the same as voodoo. Voodoo is a religion. Hoodoo is magic. I'm going to have a guest in a couple of weeks that's going to explain all that, probably. We'll move on. Anyway, Auntie Julia tried to do everything she could for the town, but she felt very unappreciated. Let's not forget to white folk. They didn't take her seriously. They was white folk. I understand I say white folk because there's a difference between white folk and white people. White folk is just stupid white people. But we'll get on to that later. But the white folk didn't take her seriously, and she felt unappreciated. Now, Julie used to sit on the porch of her home, strumming her guitar and singing songs that she made up. And finally, she began to sing with someone that, in a sense, basically said that when she died, the whole town was going to die with her. Now, she sang this song for years, but in September of 1915, Auntie Julia passed away. And at first, the town didn't die. That was until the day of Auntie Julia's funeral. Today was September 29th, 1915, when Julie Brown's friends and relatives gathered to lay her to rest in a small cemetery just outside of town, in what is now known as the Manchot Swamp. The day had been uneventful, the weather had been clear, and Julie was laid in a small wooden casket, and the casket was placed into the ground. Now, this was about four o'clock in the afternoon, and it is said that as soon as her casket was laid into the ground and the dirt put over it, a storm came in from the ocean. Now, this storm had a massive 13-foot storm surge. Now, just so you know, that's on the level with Katrina and Hugo almost. So, 125-mile-an-hour winds. So we're talking about a major Cat 3 storm. You know, these storms are just huge. And it came up suddenly. There was no warning. No one knew it was coming. They ran and the 
people that could ran and hid in the local train depot. But the storm surge flattened the depot. And 25 people died there. The storm continued to ravage the area for over 12 hours. Massive wind, rain, tornadoes, you name it. This is a hurricane we're talking about. And when others came to look on October 1st, 1915, they found the town of Veneer, the town of Ruddock, and another local town completely decimated, just wiped off the map by this massive storm that had come from out of nowhere. And those who knew about Julie Brown knew that it had been her curse. 60 people from the area died in that storm. 25 just in that one rail depot. All of their ghosts, all of their spirits stayed right there. The story goes that after the storm, many people began hearing noises whenever they would go past the woods and swamp where Thin Air and Ruddock used to be in what's now called the Munchak Swamp. And they could see ghostly apparitions wandering amongst the cypress trees. Now, that would be scary enough but it is said that the spirit of Julie Brown herself stands at the edge of the water, cackling, imprisoning all of those townsfolks that died with her on that day. Well, technically, she died a few days earlier. But you get what I'm saying. The spirits that were taken by the storm are all trapped in the swamp with Julie Brown. And it is said that she still haunts and attacks any who enter the swamp sending her ghostly denizens to bring ruin to anyone who dares enter. Now, this has been more than a hundred years. People have gone there and heard things and seen things. And the curse of Julie Brown is well known in the area. In fact, it's made it onto some paranormal shows and even onto Reddit. But the question remains, is there any evidence of Julie Brown? Well, I'm here to tell you, there actually is, I got some. So it would surprise you to know that the actual census records show that there was in fact a Julie Brown Born in the town of Ruddock, which is just next to Benier, in 1845. Uh, She apparently married, had children, and died in 1915. Now, there are stories of Auntie Julia, or Julie, however she was referred to by the people around her, writing songs and healing the sick, and even dealing with evil spirits when they would take someone. This is well documented. But what isn't documented is any prior record of any storms in the Gulf Coast in September of 1915. This storm came from out of nowhere. Now, Granted, we now know that that can happen. These storms can just form and hit, uh, you know, in an instant. But back then, this was unheard of. And for it to happen on the very day she was being interned, and for the storm to actually send its storm surge through at the very time she was going on the ground is a coincidence beyond belief. So did Julie Brown really curse the town? Voodoo isn't really about cursing, neither is hoodoo. It is about using, well, voodoo's a religion, so the rituals don't do curses at all, but hoodoo 
is using energy to protect and cleanse and guard against and dispel. So a curse, that's, that's really not the way things should go. Um, you know, hoodoo practitioners are played in the media as being one of these ultimately horrible people, but really hoodoo in practice is more for good intentions, not for bad intentions. Now, granted, of course, there's probably a light and dark side to everything, but this is the general course of things. But it does strike an interesting question. If she did curse the town because she was unappreciated, was the storm just a freak accident of nature? Or was it Julie Brown coming to collect and calling on the weather to make those who disrespected her pay the ultimate price? I guess we'll never know. But if you're ever down in Louisiana and you get around that swamp, uh, be careful. That's all I got to say. That's going to be this week's story. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Our little trip down to Louisiana. If you can't tell, I'm branching out. I've decided that uh, I've done enough about South Carolina and about Georgetown And I need to stretch my legs and wander a bit with my storytelling. So if you have a uh, ghost story or anything, send me a message. You can use a voice memo right there on the app. Let me know. Maybe I'll use your story. Um, We'll see. Until then, thanks for listening. I really appreciate having you with me. As always... Please like and subscribe to the podcast. If you would like to support, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Carolina Storyteller and support financially. We would really love it. When I say we, I mean me because I don't have anybody else working on this but me. And if you get the chance, go over to Amazon and look up Through the Flames or Redcoats by Jonathan Phoenix. Again, this was Let Me Tell You a Story. Thank you and good night.